level interview program today with uh, Christina Burnett. And so I thought it might be fun if before we get into interviewing lots of other unbelievable women that we go through and interview each other first. So uh, Christina, I just want you to um, introduce yourself and, and, and share a little bit about yourself. But I thought it might be fun for our guests to know how we got to know each other and ultimately started um, this Unbelievable Woman talk show. Yeah, definitely, Joyce. Uh, it's always uh, great to be on here on the show with you gals. Love what we've got going here with the Unbelievable Women and the Unbelievable Women Tribe. We're just going to do such amazing things together with this. And um, a little bit about me. Uh, yes, my name's Christina Brunette, and I'm over here in the northwest corner in, um, near Seattle, Washington, in a small town called Maple Valley. Uh, right here, uh, we've got uh, Mount Rainier in the backdrop. It's absolutely uh, beautiful. Love this little, little place that I live in and um, lots of walking trails for the kids and everything. I'm a, a mommypreneur, um, relationship marketer. I, I love you know helping people um, build their home-based business and, and health and nutrition and just helping people get healthier and um, build an, an income from home and um, inspiring you know others to um, uh, do you know what it is to really just step into their greatness and you know being inspired by others as well too. And um, you know, we started this show. Um, we first all met. I remember, you know, in, in a hotel room. Uh, we all came together and uh, for one of our corporate events there with um, X Views, and um, you know, just uh, started talking. We connected instantly. Just became sisters and um, really, really connected with each other. And you know, we started, uh, I, I guess, talking about the idea of the unbelievable women. Kelly, you, you had the name already picked out, and then I started talking about um, the Google Hangout show and um, blogging, and we just kind of combined all of our um, ideas together and, and came up with the unbelievable women, and, you know, all of us together. I, yeah, me too. Yeah, it's just awesome. And um, I love that we've come together to just really in, inspire and, and be inspired by and empower, you know, women to step into their power or their greatness and to really yeah. just, you know, live life fully. Um, and I love that we've, we're creating a place for all of us to come together and connect and build each other up and, um, you know, help other women uh, with their businesses and their life experiences as well. And I'm um, looking forward to doing really great things with the show and having, you know, some guests on here, some amazing guests. We've got some people lined up that um, are going to be uh, great, have uh, just a wealth of information to share with everybody for sure. So go ahead and take it back to you, Joyce. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you, Christina. And I really want everyone to just get to know you a little bit better. And I remember the story that you told whenever uh, we first started spending a little more time together about your first job and I was just so amazed at what you did for a first job so if you would um, share that with everyone so very different from what you're doing now yeah definitely um, I've you know done many things in my life um, it, it had a just strange a combination of work um, experiences but my first job um, was literally uh, right out of high school I was 19 years old I just turned 19 and was a fishing boat in Alaska um, and uh, I remember my grandma taking me out to the boat for the first time and I was getting on the boat and I was so timid and shy at that time and I had these big huge duffel bags I had to carry on the boat and one of the deckhands came up to me and you know asked uh, if he could help you know carry my bags on board and I told him no <laughs> I was so stubborn I was just like stay away from me <laughs> oh. I was setting my boundaries. I was like, stay back. <laughs> I can do this myself. I got this. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, the, it was interesting. And, you know, I, I went out there um, to uh, go fishing. I, I, you know, I had a cousin that did it, and I found out how much money I could make um, doing it. And I knew it was going to be hard work. And um, when I got up there, yeah, it was, it was really, really hard work. I, I literally, I started off in the galley washing dishes. Um, when I was 19 and then um, I went down to the factory where they process the fish and kind of tried that out a little bit and um, switched down to the factory just after being out there for a couple months and that was you know 16 hours a day seven days a week and for um, and we would go out fishing for about seven to ten days at a time and then we would come in to port every um, seven to ten days and offload our fish and go out and back 
back out and do it again. And we were only in port for maybe 24 hours, 48 hours, and, and got everything off the boat and went out and built it up again. And um, did that for about three or four months at a time. And um, you know, then I would come home and travel, and I had a lot of fun when I came home. I worked my way up to management on board the boat. I was a quality manager on the boat as well. Uh, which was hard. You know, I was um, one of very few females on the boat to get up to a management position above all these other men. There was about 68 people on the boat, and maybe you know six of us were female. So, because it's not really a job that yeah, that, that's for sure. <laughs> that females you know really you know take you know are wanting to work with smelly fish, which I you can't know, imagine too many women wanting to do <laughs> what you've done. But you really took it to a, a great level, you know, in, yeah. in your accomplishments, just in that, your first job. Yeah, yeah, so I, I mean, I, I made, you know, great money, um, more than most, you know, 19, 20 year olds could even think about making, um, and so when I came home to travel, I, my traveling buddy was literally my grandma, um, she's always been my best friend, and um, so she would go places with me, we took a lot of trips uh, to the Caribbean and Mexico, and had a lot of fun with her, and I traveled with my friends a little bit, we did some fun things on spring break or whatever, but a lot of them just, you know, they didn't have the time, or, you know, or the money uh, to be able to take off and travel and, and do things like that. And the boat allowed me to do that. So I just, I fell in love with that idea that, you know, I could go out and work really hard and make great money and, and for a couple of months and then I would come home and I would have, you know, two or three months to do whatever I wanted. I I partied, you know, that age, definitely. I spent my money. I traveled and, um, you know, had a lot of fun, bought everything that I wanted when I came home, and so I spoiled myself. I wasn't really taught um, very well as far as managing my money, so okay. <laughs> definitely, um, you know, had, had, my, had my fun with my money, but I, I don't regret anything that I did. Um, yeah. You know, it was definitely a, a good life experience, and I did that for about eight years and then I um, also recruited for the company um, as well too for about another seven years I recruited for them in the office um, I um, after my my father had gotten very sick and so I decided to uh, stay home I quit fishing at that point and my company offered me a job in the office and uh, then I recruited uh, for the vessel for another seven years and um, that was interesting too just getting you know, being a, a babysitter for fishermen. <laughs> awesome. What were you recruiting? Um, uh, recruiting uh, people to go out on the fishing vessel. Um, I would, uh, yeah, employees for the fishing vessel, the uh, different uh, processors, you know, um, deckhands, uh, people that worked in the wheelhouse. There you have your, your captain, your first mate, um, and so on. So I recruited and then made all their travel arrangements and arranged for them to uh, fly up and meet the vessel and um, come home when they're when they were done fishing and everything so okay yeah All right. yeah so um, it was uh, definitely definitely interesting you know I have a lot of great friends in that industry and um, it's it's a good industry you know, it's it's great for a young person to go out and you know make some good money um, and to pay for school as well too a lot of kids will go up there in the summertime uh, work for the you know the summer and then they'll come home and play for pay for school in fact my whole plan when I first started was to go out and, you know, make some great money for the summer and then, you know, pay for school. <coughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> I, I ended up making, you know, great money and just had a lot of fun. So I, I enjoyed it. Um, and um, I never never went to school, uh, which, which is fine. I still, you know, had a, a great career um, went with recruiting and, you know, you don't, you don't have to go to school. I mean, I think it's great. Um, if it's something you can do, and you know, if you have a passion that you're interested in pursuing, you know, go go for it, go to school. But it's well, not I'm sure you learn different work ethic <laughs> in working yes. on the ship that oh, yeah. you otherwise wouldn't learn in school. Right, exactly. Um, and you know, definitely, the boat has really taught me um, just being able to go out and work on the fishing boat. I've always felt that I can do go out and, and accomplish anything. Um, you know. Being out there on the boat working 16 hours a day, seven days a week, it's um, it's not it, it, more than physical strength. It takes a mental uh, strength to be able to do that. Were there um, any bad storms you had to go through or scary incidents? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. I got some water. Uh, definitely. Um, and it, we still had to work through the storms. I mean, we would literally mm -hmm. the boat would be tipping 
from side to side on the waves, and um, you, things would go flying across the factory, and we'd have mm -hmm. to hold, you know, hold it up. Um, they would shift the water from, you know, the boat in the holding tanks to um, kind of uh, even things out sometimes. But <clears throat> yeah, we had to. Um, we had some pretty bad storms that were scary. In fact, there are sometimes, you know, where we did shut down the factory because it was too stormy to work. Um, mm -hmm. And when the storms get that bad too, it's hard to catch the fish as yeah. well. Um, but you know, the fish has to be processed, and it has to be processed within so many hours of catching it. So it's not going mm. to just leave it sitting around in the holding tank. Um, wow. Bouncing and slopping around there. So. so um, I have a different question for you, Christina. Um, as a child, what kind of careers did you ever dream about that you, you know, as a kid? Um, as a kid, um, I I wanted to be um, a teacher or a nurse. Uh, those were, you know, I just uh, wanted to be able to, I loved working with children. I, I wrote a lot of short stories when I was younger and um, did a lot of uh, babysitting in my day, too. That was cool. how I made my money when I was growing up. And so, yeah, I wanted to just uh, do something, I guess, helping people. <coughs> um, do, your ch do your children show any aptitude or say anything about jobs or careers they're interested in these days? Yeah, I mean, they're young. Um, they are... Um, I have two boys that are eight and uh, ten, and I've got a six-year-old daughter. She's my she's my little princess, and uh, my oldest, uh, Wyatt. He, um, I'm just checking on him right now to make sure they're not getting anything. Um, he's ten. Uh, he wants to be a, a dirt bike rider uh, when he grows up. He wants to race dirt bikes, um, and I, I don't know how I feel about that quite yet. I love dirt bikes. We've always, you know, been rode dirt bikes in, in our family. I just don't know that I want my kids to make a living doing that. This is pretty. A tough, tough life there. I've watched some families go through. Um, and my uh, middle child, Ethan, I think he wants to be a soccer coach when he grows up, is what he says. So he's he loves soccer and he still loves to ride dirt bikes too. Don't get me wrong, but cool. um, he wants to do be a soccer coach. And my, you know, my six-year-old daughter, she's six and she she wants to be a princess. That's <laughs> perfect. That's what she is. Cool. Yeah, we all yeah. want to be princesses. Yeah, we all want to be princesses. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Yeah that way so yeah so when do you think things shifted for you in your mind because that's so very different from what you do now and how did things shift for you from going on on a shipping vessel in Alaska to uh -huh. being a mompreneur or was there yeah. a lot in between there well there was definitely um, a lot in between as far as um, what you know making my decision to be a, a stay-at-home mom and uh, work from home. I mean, <clears throat> you know, I wanted something where I could um, do, do something to inspire people and help people and um, always have wanted to do, you know, my own type of business. But just, you know, going out and working really hard and seeing that I can work hard to make a, a, a good living, but obviously it didn't sustain. I, I don't have any of that money left. And then when I worked in the office, um, you know, commuting, uh, you know, to go to work, I knew that wasn't what I wanted either. I mean, I this work in Seattle from where I live was a long, it, it would take literally two to three hours just one way just to get to work. Um, and I would spend up to 12 hours a day, you know, with having my children in childcare. I just didn't, um, didn't want that. Even, even when I did go down to part time, it was still just, it was too much, too much time away from my kids. And, um, that went into, um, See what happened next. I, my husband, um, he actually ended up breaking both of his legs in a motorcycle accident, um, and then I seen that, um, you know, that happened too. You know, when I was staying home with my kids, and I had um, a one-year-old, a two-year-old, and a newborn, and a husband with two broken legs, and you know, his income stopped coming in. I was like, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? And we had, you know, our six months of living expenses saved up, and. Um, at that point, it was just like, we, you know, there wasn't anything else. He couldn't work. I couldn't go to work. I had to take care of him uh, because he had two broken legs and I had the babies and he couldn't, certainly couldn't take care of the babies, let alone himself. I was literally, you know, um, having to help him with everything. And uh, so our six months of the living expenses wasn't enough to keep us going. And so, you know, we, we lost our house. We had to move, um, really went through a lot there. And um, I... Look, started looking at things, you know, with residual income, 
and I kind of played around in the home-based business field for a little bit. I always tried to get something going, wasn't that serious about it. And I went into um, the insurance industry, which is another industry where you can create some residual income, and uh, really started taking a look at things there. I was very successful with my insurance business in Tennessee and was actually the top account opener for the state there. Um, but really saw the, you know, what the, um, the power of residual income and what it can do and it can continue to pay you, you know, through those circumstances, those family emergencies that you have and, um, you know, it can give you that flexibility that to be able to be home with your children and um, stay, you know, be able to be there for their field trips and, mm -hmm. you know, help out in their classroom and it's, you know, it, it's still a lot of work. Um, you know, being home with your children and trying to do the home-based business, but it just takes some uh, time management skills and, you know, setting things, um, having a time for everything and making that time for your kids. And it's nice to be able to have that ability and not, you know, have to sit in traffic for two or three hours just to go to work and, and make a living because that's not really making a living either, you know, not and not, you know, a life that I want for my kids oh, no. being raised by somebody else in, in child care. And yeah. I, I just love, you know, what the power of residual income does and allows you to stay home with um, your children and uh, have that flexibility and everything. So um, that was definitely just a combination of things for me that made that shift uh, to, um, you know, go from working for someone. You can only trade, you know, so many hours in a day for so many dollars. And um, the, really, the only way to really build well is to do that through residual income. And it might take some time to get it up to where you know you're making enough to uh, be able to afford to stay home. But it, once you do that, it's it's well worth um, all the effort and time that you put into it. Is that the princess I see there? Yes, it is. It's a princess here. Can you say hello, <laughs> Olivia. <laughs> um, but. Uh, yeah, just a combination of everything. So I just love this. I mean, I'm here with my kids right now. They're, you know, they're home from school for the summer and um, get to be here with them. And when I'm done, you know, doing this recording, we'll probably go off and do something fun. Awesome. Do, you have any fa do you have any family vacations planned for the summer? Uh, yeah. Um, we are going to go to um, the, we're going to take a trip to Idaho to see my friend, um, my good friend Christy, and spend some time there. And nice. uh, then we're going to also go back to one of the beaches that I grew up grew up uh, going to in Oregon, uh, Seaside and Cannon Beach, my, one of my favorite places. My grandma used to take us there, um, Cannon Beach, every every other weekend, um, and we go for a couple weeks in the summer. And I just love that place and love the you know I haven't taken my kids back there yet really, so I'm really looking forward to taking them there and sharing some memories with them. Uh, there That's as well. cool. Yeah. Yeah, that is real cool. So. Um, how far from Seattle are you, Christina? Probably about 45 minutes to an hour away from Seattle area. I'm going to so be in Seattle um, on the 10th of July or oh, 11th. Okay. Yeah, okay. that awesome. picture that I painted, we're yeah. in, I'm, in, I'm installing it at the restaurant. So. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah, let me know when you're in town. We'll have to get together for sure. And yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And seeing your painting live. I'd come up yeah. and do that in the restaurant, so that'd be great. Meet the sure. kids. Okay, yeah. so here's a fun question. What's your favorite? I've got several funny ones for you. What's okay. your favorite uh, kid movie to watch with the kids? Um, or Hook. movie? Yeah. Hook. Hook. Ah, mine yeah. too. I love Hook. <laughs> I love Hook. I just love the adventure in Hook. I love Robin Williams. Gosh, it's just. You know, having him, what happened with him was just awful, but he was one of my favorite actors, all-time actors, and um, I just, I love the movie. I love the adventure, the excitement. Yeah, um, it's a great and, movie. Uh, it is. It's just a great movie, great all-around movie uh, for family movie to watch with the kids as well, too, and a good message. I mean, gosh, a, a great message, too. You know, don't um, uh, let the kid part of you go, um, for right. sure. You should always okay, have so what that, it, that it left in you. <laughs> And, and a line from the movie that sticks in your head, is there one? Oh, that's a tough one. Not not, not that I can come up with right now. No, can you think of one? Yeah. <laughs> Joyce, do you know one? No, okay. I just saw it the other day, but no, I don't. Go ahead. Okay, so when one of the Lost Boys, when, when um, 
Peter comes back and he doesn't really remember who he is all that much. And he's yeah. like looking in his face. He goes, oh, there you are, Peter. It's like, he, I see you. <laughs> you, <laughs> you said that so perfect. I remember that part. So that was great. That was a great part. Oh, definitely. So. Fun, fun movie. Mm-hmm. So tell us about your husband a little bit, Christina. We don't hear too much about him. You know, as how did you meet and Yeah, um uh, yeah, my husband's name you know? is Yeah, he's his name is Larry. And um I, I love that I got my last name from him, Brunette. I don't have to deal with my other name, it was just awful. But yeah, we met um, for the first time. We were going out with a group of guy friends. I was one of my trips home from the boat. I think I just uh, gotten back from fishing and Everyone was going out um, dancing that night, and he was with them. And uh, that was our first um, first night out together, and we just we've been together ever since. And you know, he was probably you know working on the fishing boat and um, going out and leaving for three or four months at a time. It was really hard to find someone that would be there for me when I got back. And I got to be you know where I would just tell people you know I'll you know you know you're great or whatever, and I'll I'll just you know we'll see each other when I get back if you're not with somebody else kind of thing. And um, that's just the way I, I dealt, you know, dating. And uh, Larry was there when I got back <laughs> from fishing. That's awesome. He knew a good and thing when he saw it. He did. He knew a good thing. Well, it, it, didn't, it didn't hurt that I bought him a motorcycle one of the times I left. <laughs> <laughs> I think his best friend said he had to marry me at that point. <laughs> that was an engagement motorcycle. Yeah, our engagement motorcycle. So uh, we... Uh, yeah, we, we had a lot of fun, and he's seen how much money I was making, and um, he ended up going out fishing with me as well. So uh, oh. we did that. Uh, we fished together for a few years, and um, and then it was, uh, you know, he was there for me when my, uh, with everything with my dad happened, and um, you know, we, um, at that point, I had to stay home, and he supported that, and uh, one of the reasons why I had to stay home, I had to uh, take my, my brother and sister had to come and live with us for a while, too, after my dad passed away. It's my my mom just wasn't able to really deal with everything, and so my brother was about 11, and my sister was 16 when she came to live with us, and he was just, you know, awesome as far as his support through through all of that, and it was just wonderful to be there, you know, for my brother and sister through in a time that they really needed me the most and to be able to stay home with them. So, um, and he's um, as far as work, he does. Um, he's a plumber. Um, he works as a plumber. He's done that for quite some time now. He's very good at what he does, and. Um, he uh, works for a company, but we also do our plumbing, do a plumbing business on the side too that um, we have that he does on the weekends and, and after work that we're trying to get going, but just not really quite ready for him to step away from the health insurance benefits and everything. So is he uh, on board with you as far as being a um, stay-at-home mom and on and mommypreneur, network marketer? Does he support you in the business? Um, that's a good question. I he's he's definitely been. Um, supportive but I mean he's had we've had our moments and definitely I think a lot of people go through this in a relationship mm -hmm. with um, you know that are in the network marketing industry I think a lot of people struggle with that because um, you know to get the spouse to see eye to eye on everything because they just don't always get it and um, so it's definitely been a struggle and it's been something that we've had to work through but he's also been you know supportive as well too um, but um, he definitely, you know, wants me home with the kids and um, being home with them and and everything. And uh, you know, network marketing is tough. It's a tough, you know, as far as I'm, I'm out there talking to so many different types of people and um, different um, men and everything too. And um, it's, uh, you know, he's he's been supportive, but it's definitely it's been a, a struggle. And well, you know, he has to be a confident him. man to be able yeah. to allow you to do that. You know, yeah, and not yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And things things have been really good actually lately. Yeah. yeah, there is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So well questions, Kelly? I have another couple good ones. Okay. Um we know we all do our reading. We're all, you know, personal development junkies, I think, in this yeah. industry. So yeah. what book are you reading right now? Is it a personal development book? Is it entertainment? What is it? I read a lot of personal development books. Um, I, I love the one. It's called uh, Crash the Chatterbox. And I, I 
don't know the name of the author, but I'm sure you could find it if you just go and Google it on Amazon or whatnot. It's called Crash the Chatterbox. And it's, it's just about um, getting, getting rid of that negative thinking um, that, that you have, um, that people you know, have, um, getting, getting rid of that negative self-talk. I've heard of that one. And, yeah, it's, it's really a great book. You know, 60,000 words, I think I said this before, there's 60,000 words that go through our minds every single day, and 45,000 of those, in, on average, are negative. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, it's about uh, really changing those to the positive and doing things that uh, can, you know, help create a more positive influence on your life. Because, you know, words yeah. are, are powerful. Words, you know, create strife. They create um, happiness. Uh, the words that we tell ourselves can be very, very powerful and have just a huge influence on any aspect of our life, too. So, yeah, uh, great book, so though. Great true. book. Yeah. So very true. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Did you have another question, Joyce? Um, well, how do you, I'm just thinking of going forward now. So how do you see your your future shaping up now that um, uh, you've, you're, you've got things pretty set in your mind where you're going with this, but how do you see things shaping up? Oh, gosh. Things are just really looking unbelievable. <laughs> to use the right um, word. Yes, use the right word. Things are looking really unbelievable. And um, gosh, it's just this last year has been amazing. Uh, being, you know, with a company like Xviews and connecting and working with the people that, you know, we get to um, talk with. And it's just the most phenomenal group of leaders I've ever had the pleasure of working with. And um, the everyone at the top of our company, CEO, and just having someone you know like like Eddie to work with as well, and, and you guys too. I mean, it's just made some great connections, and um, I love what we're doing here on this show. I think we're going to really inspire and help a lot of women um, to um, go out and um, you know uh, start their own businesses or just really step into their greatness and and do what it is that they you know are. Have been longing to do, and just bring that uh, greatness out in them. And looking forward to helping so many people, um, women uh, like us in the industry, do that, as well as you know, just helping people be healthier. And um, yeah. love that our company, um, you know, gives back to a charity like Viva Kids. And looking forward to you know, for every product, one of our products that are purchased, a, a bottle goes back to a malnourished child in need of premium nutritional products that they can get the nutrients they need and looking forward to helping you know thousands of kids you know by um, growing an organization with this company so I uh, definitely yeah. see big things happening for us here for sure it's and I just exciting. I just love the fact that your daughter's sitting there on your lap and listening to <laughs> your aspirations and hearing all the right words and yeah. you know that all just all the wheels are turning in her mind as she hears the example coming from you so that's a wonderful testament yeah, yeah, she's, and I think it's it's good to include, you know, being here at home. That's one of the great things of being at home is having your kids here, uh, working alongside of you. You know, it's not just my business; it's our business, it's a family sure. business, and uh, you know, it, it's important to their that they have their opinions and get to, um, and you know, tell you what they think should be done. And so I, you know, include them in whatever I can, and um, you know, she's. She's here with me while I'm doing the show. She wants to be on the show. She can join us and, and listen yeah. in and get inspired by things, too. Olivia, so, yeah. you can be unbelievable girl, princess. My unbelievable princess? Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> we spent um, the day at the, at the lake and the river yesterday just hanging out uh, with the family for Father's Day. And so, oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's yeah she, very cool. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Just, that's Look, wonderful. What? I, I have a question for you. Okay. 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 About your bucket list, tell uh, me one thing that's on your bucket list. That, just tell us one. One thing. Okay. I've got a lot of things on my bucket list. Well, but... we all do, but just give us one good one. <laughs> Maybe two. Two? Okay. Well, uh, one good one. I, I want to, you know, I, I'm a very outdoorsy. Uh, person and love doing a lot of things in, in the outdoors and hiking and um, you know riding dirt bikes and, and everything with the family. Um, I want to. I've never done an overnight backpacking trip though, so 
I would love to. In fact, I think we're going to try and make that happen this summer. Just do um, a, a hiking trip um, and pack a tent with us and uh, stay, you know, stay the night. So I just would love to do that. That's definitely one thing on my bucket list for sure, too. Um, nice. Another thing, um, I guess, would be to, you know, I, I want to go see the new Disneyland in, um, in Hawaii. <laughs> I didn't know there was there. one in Hawaii. Where yeah, they're on a big on a big island. They're supposed to come up. I think that they already have it available there. I was kind of looking into it, but really? there's a new Disneyland on the big island in Hawaii. Yes. Wow. Really? Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Really? So, yeah. Yes. Yes. And okay. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. I'm sure your kids are kind of in on that one too. They're like, oh, yeah. yeah do it. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to be saving money for a Disneyland trip after our um, our Florida, our uh -huh. October Florida. Okay. My birthday's on the 8th, and so some of the money I made this weekend I put right into that bucket for my ah. Disneyland trip. So yeah. Hawaii, that would be even better. Yeah, that would like be awesome. I, I love that you want that you want to go to Disneyland. Your kids are all grown and everything. <laughs> your, your daughter is. So. Yeah, <laughs> I want to go. Awesome, awesome. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. Yeah. Well, Atlantis. That would be another good. Place. Oh, that's that's an awesome place. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I know. Once the wheels start turning, it's like, yeah, and, and then I want to go here, and then I want to do that. So, <laughs> you know. What's great is that we can dream that way and and just make those dreams come into reality, you know, rather yeah. than feeling trapped. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, we, you know, we will be doing these phone calls and getting together. On yeah. I'm looking forward to doing our unbelievable women show from the beaches of the world. And uh, yes. you know, all of us, you know, calling in Absolutely. from different locations or meeting you guys somewhere to do the show at some, you know. Neat location. Maybe we'll do yeah. it from Atlantis. Disneyland in Hawaii. Yeah, in Hawaii. There we go. <laughs> That's right. Well, Christina, yeah. it's been a pleasure getting to know you better, and it's an honor oh, to work nice. with you. And I'm just so happy to call you my friend and my sister. Oh, thank you. Me thank too. You. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. It's a pleasure um, getting to know you guys as well, and looking forward to. Um, hearing more about you on the on the next shows that we do, Joyce and Kelly. So Joyce um, is next. Joyce is next. <laughs> next, so, next Monday. Yeah. So join us again next Monday at one o'clock Eastern time or ten a.m. Pacific time on Mondays here on the Unbelievable Woman Show. So Bye, thanks, everybody. everybody. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Take care.